Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Missouri Students, sponsored by the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Just one of, this is just one of the many sessions that are offered through this fair, so if you would like to check out our other sessions, please visit the moacac.org website. Also, this presentation, as well as all of the presentations, have been recorded. So in about a week after uh, today, this session will be available on the MOACAC website, as well as about a week after all of the other sessions, you'll be able to find those as well. So now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Welch and I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment and today I have with me Kathy Tipton and Tyler Johnson. Uh, Kathy is our Acting Director of Admissions and Tyler is also an Assistant Director of Admissions. So. Okay, I'm going to get started. Um, first I'm going to let you guys know a little bit about Missouri S&T and RALA and then Kathy is going to take it over from there. So first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about Rolla, Missouri. Uh, Rolla is located right in the middle of the state. We're on I-44, which used to be Route 66, and we're about halfway between St. Louis and Springfield, Missouri. We have about 20,000 people who live in Rolla in the city limits, but another 50,000 or so come to Rolla for shopping and dining and entertainment from the surrounding communities. Rolla is part of the South Central Ozark Highlands, so you will find many lakes, rivers, streams, all kinds of places where people enjoy fishing and canoeing and kayaking and rafting and all kinds of other boating. Um, there's also caves to explore. Uh, we have zip lines. And inside the city of limits of Rolla, we have 300 acres of parks, um, which also include about 10 miles of walking trails. Uh, Rolla is also, uh, it has a nice balance of urban development uh, with the small town charm. We have several big box retail stores and corporate brand restaurants, as well as many locally owned shops uh, and, fan and fabulous dining establishments. Um, but you'll also find all the services that you're going to need, including Phelps Health, which is our nationally accredited hospital system. Of course, Rolla is also home to Missouri University of Science and Technology which is one of only 16 technological research universities in the nation. Uh, so first slide here that we talk about are some of our rankings. Uh, Missouri S&T is currently ranked the hey, number Cindy, one university I, in Missouri. I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but we can't see any of the slides. We only see the first slide. Oh, okay. Well, is that better? That's the first, yep, you're going now. Okay, well, I guess I was not hitting it hard enough. Hmm, sorry. Um, so uh, Missouri S&T is uh, ranked the number one public university in Missouri. Uh, we are ranked that by College Factual and that's based on not only the excellent education but also on the amount of scholarships that our students get as well as um, the, um, they do internships and co-ops and then they get great starting salaries when they leave Missouri S&T. Uh, we're also ranked the third best engineering school in the nation by College Factual, and we've been ranked that about three or four years in a row now. Uh, the one that I really love is this third one, that we're ranked the sixth university in the United States for annual return on investment. And when you're talking about 4,500 different institutions, uh, that's really huge. We're also ranked the 14th brainiest university. Um, that usually either scares some people or it really excites them, so I hope it excites you. And then of course, the 20th safest campus. Now this is something new that we've recently been ranked and I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, we have a, um, a chief of police who's a retired secret service uh, guy and he has brought all kinds of really safe things to our campus. Um, and so we're gonna uh, keep you safe when you come here. Now this uh, slide talks about a first try at ROI. Uh, last year, Georgetown University did a study where they tried to rank 4,500 different colleges on return on investment. 
And Missouri S&T ranked in the top 50 in three different categories uh, relating to return on investment. Uh, specifically, uh, at the 40-year return, that's our million and a half uh, degree there. So Missouri S&T is also the top public university in Missouri um, and second only in the state to College of Pharmacy when you add in the public and private. So we have two different colleges at Missouri S&T. We have the College of Engineering and Computing and we have the College of Arts, Sciences, and Business. So in the College of Engineering and Computing, we have 15 different engineering degrees, as well as computer science and geology and geophysics. All of our students who are coming into a uh, Missouri S&T as a freshman will do the freshman year advising and career exploration program if they're interested in doing any form of engineering. In that program, you're going to learn about all of the different engineering degrees, um, and which is going to really help you solidify, do I really want to be an aerospace engineer or, oh my gosh, what's this ceramic engineering? I've never heard of that before. So it's a great program and we find that our students, it gives them an extra couple semesters to make sure they know which degree they actually want to seek. We also have in this area minors in biomedical engineering and humanitarian engineering. The way the biomedical engineering is usually done at Missouri s and some students might want to do mechanical engineering as their major, along with biomedical engineering, if they want to go into prosthetics. If you're wanting to go into research, uh, sometimes ceramic engineering might be a great fit for you. Um, and then, of course, a lot of students who are doing biological science or chemistry might do the biomedical engineering as a leg up in the medical school, if that's what they're aiming for. In the College of Arts, Sciences, and Business, uh, we have a lot of different programs that are uh, really great. We have biological science, chemistry, and physics. In the physics area, we have a bachelor's, master's, and PhD program. In the business management and systems, um, we have, it's AACSB accredited, and there's only a very small amount of undergraduate business programs in the United States that are accredited, so that's really great. We also have teacher certification in elementary, middle, and secondary school. And then we have, of course, the pre-professional, pre-law, pre-med, pre-nursing, pre-veterinarian. We also have a direct entry program with the St. Louis College of Pharmacy, so students can do either three years here and then four, or th the traditional four here and four there. In this area, you're going to see uh, cybersecurity and information assurance as a minor. Typically, students who are doing IST, the information science and technology, or computer science might do this. This uh, minor is backed by the Department of Defense and Homeland Security, so it's a, it's a terrific minor as well. Brand new this year, we have a global engineering program. Uh, so this is an opportunity for students to earn two bachelor's degrees in five years. You can earn your Bachelor of Science in any engineering field um, combined with a Bachelor of Arch, Arts in either French or Spanish. Uh, so you will do a semester of study abroad and also a semester of internship abroad. And you'll do that either in a French speaking country or a Spanish speaking country, depending on which language you select. You can learn more about this program at globalengineering.mst.edu. On this slide, we talk a little bit about our student outcomes. Uh, part of the reason why we rank so high in the, United, in the United States is because of these student outcomes. We have a fabulous uh, career center and uh, some of their uh, top job basically is to get our students uh, jobs. And so you can see that our average starting salary is almost $64,000 and that's with a bachelor's degree uh, when students um, graduate. Now we also do co-ops and internships. Internships are summer only. Uh, students might make about $10,000 doing a summer internship. And then a co-op is typically eight or nine months. And so students basically put everything on hold and they go off to work for eight or nine months. And when they come back, they pick things up where they were. Those students are typically making around 30 or $40,000 during that time of co-op. So you can see this is a great way for students to pay for their education. Um, our career fair is one of the largest in the Midwest. 
Last year at this time, we had 331 employers that came from 49 different states. And um, those th 331 different companies usually bring anywhere from one to 15 recruiters. So that gym is packed full of about 1,500 recruiters. And then usually three to 4,000 students go through in the six hour period. So you can see down at the bottom that picture, it's a very busy event. Um, our students go to work for all of the fabulous companies, Boeing, Amazon, Google, SpaceX, ExxonMobil. Uh, we have a lot of companies that continue to come back to Missouri S&T to hire our students. There are about 250 different organizations that students can get involved with. Uh, we do have NCAA Division II athletics. We also have student design teams, fraternities and sororities, theater, music, band, orchestra, ensembles, art classes, a lot of different honor societies. And then of course we have the interest clubs. So you can do skydiving or dancing or barbecue, all kinds of different fun activities that students can get involved in. Now, Missouri s and has a mascot called Joe Miner. So our athletics are minor athletics. Um, however, we uh, really have a fabulous group of athletes. Usually our students are on the ESPN Academic All-American list. Uh, we've been there since 2000, usually somewhere around the top five. Um, those students are scholar athletes and so they know that they're going to come here, play their sport, get a great job, and get a good, you know, get a good education too. Um, some of these teams are very uh, competitive. Our swimming team is fabulous. And so um, if you are interested in doing varsity athletics, you certainly want to talk to the coach. Usually you want to do that uh, either in your junior year or as soon as possible if you're past your junior year. Um, and then if you aren't interested, in the athletics, uh, varsity athletics. We do have also um, many, we have uh, 19 different intramurals and also 39 different club sports. Additionally, we have about 20 student design teams. Now these student design teams are going to be similar to robotics in high school. Basically you build something, build a car or a canoe or um, something like that, and then you compete against other schools. And so within these different design teams, the 20 different design teams, we have um, competed and won in about 10 of those teams. We recently uh, are in first through fifth place in the United States. So one of the ones that's really fabulous, our Mars Rover uh, in 2017 was world champions. And right after they won the world championship, uh, NASA sent their space suits, their NASA or their Mars space suits to us. Uh, and our students got to try them on and use them out at our experimental mine that we have for mining engineers. And so I really think that's cool. Not many students in America get to try on NASA's uh, uh, space suits. So I think that's a fabulous, fabulous way to um, enjoy one of these hands-on uh, design teams. Now I'm going to turn it over to Kathy. All right. Um, one thing that I think is always really important to share uh, with students about s and is that you're going to be supported from the first time that you step, well, maybe not the first time, hopefully you come for a visit, but after you're admitted, um, when you come to advising and registration, which is your next step as an admitted student, um, you'll start feeling that support uh, from our campus and our currently um, our currently enrolled students and our faculty and staff. And so here in the picture here, you'll see our Student Success Center. And this is a place where um, I feel is a one-stop shop for students to get help. Um, this can be help transitioning to college. It can be with your time management skills. It can be, hey, I need to connect with another um, currently enrolled student through a peer-to-peer -peer mentor program. Um, any kind of help, you, you know, you can be served at the Student Success Center. Uh, we also, of course, have uh, advisors that you will meet during advising and registration. These professional advisors will help you um, carve out uh, a path to achieve your academic goals. So they're going to help you with your coursework and get you connected and then, um, of course, connect you with a faculty mentor as well. 
Uh, we have counseling services that really kind of concentrate on um, our students' mental health. We have IT that will support you with your techno technology needs. Uh, Student Diversity Initiatives has a variety of different events throughout the year and really contributes to an inclusive community uh, at ST. And then, of course, we have the Student Health Center, which helps um, serve as that uh, walk-in clinic that you might need if you're not feeling uh, well at ST. This gives you a snapshot of what our campus looks like uh, in terms of our enrollment. So this year, first day of enrollment, we are having in-person classes right now, in addition to some hybrid courses and some on fully online courses. And we have um, a little over 7,500 students. Uh, our undergraduate population is a little over 6,000, and we welcomed about 1,118 freshman students on the first day of classes. We also have a healthy transfer class. So if you are a student who is looking to utilize A plus dollars or you already know that you're going to be starting at another um, to your institution, we can help, um, help bridge that, that gap uh, your first couple years in providing transfer guides to help assist with the curriculum that you need uh, to transfer to s and without losing any kind of credits. We get a lot of our students from the state of Missouri, a little over 70%. And um, we also, of course, get a, bright, a, a lot of students from states contiguous to uh, Missouri, as well as Texas and California. Those large states do, do yield um, some large numbers. And we also have an international student population. So um, just for students who are interested in that diversity, that is something that you can find at ST. This year, uh, there are Two different ways as a first time freshman to apply to s and um, Both can be found at apply.mst.edu. Um, and the process is, is very similar. So you would go to apply.mst.edu, submit an application. There is no application fee to apply to s and um, But for students who are coming in as first time freshmen for the fall 21 semester, you have the opportunity to apply utilizing your test score in your admission decision, or you can apply um, without utilizing your test scores. And so a lot of, um, you'll hear test optional as that option. Um, so I'm gonna briefly kind of describe both. But as a student who wants to utilize your test score, you will apply, you can submit unofficial test scores and unofficial transcripts to be reviewed. And we will look at, um, there on the left, we're hoping that you've completed or will be completing that um, college prep core curriculum during your high school years. Uh, we'll look at that core curriculum and we will look at your test score and your GPA and class rank if you have that at your school um, to actually make that admission decision. If you are applying to s and and you would like to apply test optional, so you don't want to um, use your test scores in that decision, um, you can do that and you will receive more of a holistic approach to your application um, admission decision. So we will be looking at, again, that core curriculum, how well you've done in that. So we'll be looking at your grade point average. And in addition, we're going to be looking at your extracurricular activities. Um, we have a few, I think it's actually two short answer questions on the application um, that we'll be asking you to complete. And we'll be looking at the, those additional pieces to make that admission decision. Um, for either of those options, uh, admission decisions are, are happening pretty quickly. Um, you should at this point start seeing admission decisions. If you've already applied, you probably will start seeing admission decisions now and letters in the mail here in the next week. Um, if you are getting ready to apply for admission, you should see admission decisions within two weeks of, of submitting all of those application components. Um, both students and we'll talk a little bit more about this too, um, but both students uh, going with test or test optional will be automatically reviewed for what we call merit-based university scholarships. Um, and the question that we're getting a lot right now is, it, can I apply test optional and then submit a test score for scholarship purposes? And you can, but we do also have scholarships that we are awarding students that um, are, are not based on test score at all. Um, so as a student is admitted, I've been kind of, I've already been talking about advising and registration. That would be uh, your next step as an admitted student to um, pay your enrollment fee and establish your housing priority and go ahead and select that advising and registration date. And at ST, we have a lot of early decision makers. So we do have advising and registration dates that start as early as February. Um, online math placement testing uh, will start mid-October and then um, again information sessions are going to be available virtual and in person this year so that we can um, meet families where they might be comfortable right now. The next slide Cindy. I think the next slide talks about um, maybe cost of education and Hopefully Cindy's gonna advance that soon. There we go, the other way.
The other way, Cindy. All right, let me see if I can. Yeah, still going the wrong. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, so the direct cost of education there will give you a good idea on the tuition and supplies and housing and dining fees at S&T. So our tuition and fees are based on 28 credit hours. That is the average for our first time college students at S&T, and that includes 11 hours of supplemental course fees. Um, there's also some required fees that you'll hear about probably at any campus, but at our campus, they're called the student activity, health service, and the IT fees. So that's gonna total um, for our students right now on, camp on campus at 12,672. Our books and supplies um, comes in at 690, and then our housing and dining, again, is, is based on our um, traditional um, average Average, uh, first time college student at 10,722. And so a total for a Missouri resident is just a little over 24,000. And then our um, financial assistance office always wants to be um, very clear that we do also survey our students. And so they typically budget and spend a little over $2,300 just in personal spending. Um, so maybe it's some transportation costs or some fun, fun things that they do on campus. And then like I was mentioning earlier, we do have merit based university scholarships, which I think is next. And um, these are awarded automatically to students who are admitted. Uh, the nice thing is they don't have an actual um, application, so they're automatic. Um, they vary depending on um, where you are in that um, process. Uh, for those who are submitting their test, test scores will be evaluated as part of that process. And those who um, do not um, submit their test, there will be um, other review for these scholarship awards. Um, and then in addition to that, the neat thing is that these upgrades are gonna be made through June. So as um, you have new information, whether it be your GPA or your test score, you can continue to submit that information. Um, and they are renewable for four years. Um, so eight semesters with a cumulative of a 3.0 cumulative GPA. We also have additional scholarships that um, are going to require a test this year. And the Chancellor's Scholarship is one of those. So that's our most prestigious scholarship for Missouri residents. And that equates to $12,000 per year. Um, this is awarded to 15 uh, Missouri residents. And it is in addition to Bright Flight. So if the student also has Bright Flight, um, that will just add on. But the Chancellor's Scholarship does replace your, your previous merit-based scholarship, which is um, less than 12,000. Uh, the deadline to apply this year is December 1, so you can take your ACT up through um, even that October. I don't know if they have any November tests this year, but the October test and um, the requirements for uh, students to apply is a 31 or higher ACT and be in the top 10% of their class or have a 3.75 GPA. Uh, we are planning interviews for January, and um, that information typically goes out about um, a little after Christmas uh, to invite students uh, to those interviews. Um, we also have additional scholarships that students can apply for at scholarships.mst.edu. Um, these would be academic departmental awards, they can be other campus awards, some of you may be involved in Project Lead the Way or FIRST Robotics. Um, all of these scholarships can be found at scholarships.mst.edu. And if you are listening and you're already admitted to s and all of these scholarships go live October 1. So you're in a great place to either apply or start getting your um, login set up so that you can then apply for these scholarships. Um, instructions, again, on how to set up your, what we call our Joe's account, as, um, as in Joe Minor, uh, is available once you apply for admission and that will get you access to apply for these scholarships as well. Uh, we also offer financial assistance. So we do encourage students to complete the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA form, um, but it is not required on our campus. Um, typically, uh, students will submit this form anytime after October. Um, if you do uh, submit the early application, you will get an early financial aid um, estimated package in December from s and And then typically our final um, or our more definite uh, financial aid package goes out in March. Uh, we try to get that to everybody by mid-March, so students who and families who might be waiting on that information to make their decision um, does have that. Our FAFSA code, so you can send um, your FAFSA information to us at 002517. We also have, um, with that FAFSA form, our financial aid uh, office will uh, work with um, all of that information to award you grants, federal work study, loans, any of those things that might um, 
be awarded to you um, based on that estimated family contribution. Um, and students who do need a student loan, um, all students are entitled to one, but you do have to complete a FAFSA form. Uh, something I always like to also talk about on the financial assistance office is just as you have admissions counselors in our admission office and just as you're assigned advisors when you come through the process to be advised and, and get that um, good information on your coursework, you also have individual financial aid counselors. And so they are assigned um, by student's last name. They are able to meet with you virtually or in person. And so I really encourage you to reach out just as you do to the admissions office to get some additional help as you're going through that process because whether um, you as a student have looked into this or you as a family have um, already have a student in school, that information is always helpful um, to get you through that, that process that can sometimes can, can be kind of tricky. So uh, we always like to end with how we are here to help. Uh, we want to um, best serve you with the information and the tools that you need to make your college decision. Uh, we are offering in-person daily visits as well as some um, open house dates this fall. Uh, we also, and all of this can be found at visit.mst.edu. Uh, we also have virtual options. So um, like tonight where you have a presentation, we also have different virtual options where you connect with current students, um, certain or select academic departments each month. Uh, we have kind of a rotation. So um, if you visit visit.mst.edu often, you'll see different things each month. And we hope that we can answer your questions and help, um, help you feel and, and get a sense of our community here at ST. We also have a virtual tour, obviously, in, in social media accounts. So please do follow us wherever um, you might currently um, spend your time. And then, of course, we want you to reach out when you might have questions. And so hopefully some of you have questions now um, that we can also address during this chat. And of course, feel free to continue to ask questions. Um, all questions are good ones. Okay, so the first question was about the Chancellor's Scholarship and it's 3.75 weighted or unweighted was the question. Um, for, uh, for students who are applying for that Chancellor's, we actually will take the GPA that is provided from your school. So if your school is going to provide a weighted GPA, we will consider that um, in that criteria. So the next question is, is asking about the average size of our undergraduate classes. And so, um, you know, this is kind of, it's tricky this year. I'm, I'm guessing you're probably wanting to know in general, you know, when it's, when we're not in the COVID climate. Um, Freshman classes can really vary. Uh, we don't have, it's not, it's not very common for us to have classes that are very much over 100 students for even those introductory classes. Um, there may be some very few classes that might be a little over 100, but for the most part, um, our average class size is much smaller, obviously. I think it's around 29 now. Um, but so depending on the section, and I know you're asking on the freshman side, um, probably more so, as you're coming in, there are a few that are gonna be larger that have some breakout sessions that are smaller. Um, of course, right now, our, um, we are practicing social distancing, and of course, we have classes that are even smaller than that to, to accommodate our students. Um, but, but yes, traditionally, that's probably as big as you're going to see one of those entry-level classes. All right, let's see. Cindy, do you wanna take any of these? Is the 31 ACT score based on the test with the written portion? Um, so you're probably asking about the chancellors again. And that is, we do not currently look at that additional writing portion of either the SAT or ACT. So we are not, we're not gonna be considering that. So it's just going to be your general ACT composite score, um, or your, or your SAT score equivalent. If you want to read one to me, I'll answer. Oh, sure. I know you probably have a hard time seeing it with your presentation. Just trying to filter through here. So, so still on the, on the topic of the Chancellor's Scholarship, will it automatically be renewed or do you have to interview each year? So another good question. Um, no, it's actually automatically renewed. So once, you, once you're awarded that Chancellor Scholarship coming in as a freshman, that stays with you as long as you maintain that cumulative requirement. Okay. Do we have an ROTC program? Cindy, you want that one? Absolutely. Yes, we do. We have Army ROTC and Air Force ROTC. 
Uh, both of those are fabulous programs and they have some really good scholarships attached to that. So if you're interested in either program, uh, typically you would want to get in touch with the Army or Air Force ROTC, but you can contact us and we'll put you in touch with them. Yep, certainly. Um, so is when a student applies to engineering, are you directly admitted into your choice of engineering or do you, are you accepted to the School of Engineering and then have to apply? This, that's a good question too. Um, and we're actually looking at making some changes to that for some select criteria, um, but I don't have that information yet to share. So currently when a student is admitted to s and you're admitted to the college, the College of Engineering and Computing or the College of Arts, Sciences and Business. Um, traditionally, uh, the students who are going to be in engineering, since we have 15 different programs, um, historically we've had students that really benefit from an entry um, course that exposes you to uh, not only the design aspect, but also to all the different programs that we offer. And so we are still operating under that um, method of where students come in and they are able to um, take some of those introductory courses and also meet and see different departments and then make their selection. Um, can you go ahead and make your selection? You can, um, you, but to answer your actual direct admit, you're not technically admitted straight into that department. You're just showing your emphasis or your, your um, preferred area of interest. Um, but I can tell you that at ST, we don't have caps in those departments. So as long as you are a successful student and you're meeting the criteria of, of um, satisfying certain courses, um, you will have no problem transitioning into your major of course, a uh, major of choice. All right, um, how about this one, Cindy? In regards to the residential halls, are there bathrooms shared per floor or per suite or how does that look? Well, we have a, a lot of different op opportunities for you. Uh, we do have the traditional dorm, which would have rooms where uh, two males would be in the same bedroom or two females and then you would go down the hall and use the restroom with 15 other males or females and the, the floors are segregated so all males on one floor all fields females on another. Uh, then we also have suites so in the suites you typically have uh, four students and sometimes each student would have a bedroom by themselves other times they might be sharing with another student but they would have bathrooms in the suite and usually there's two uh, you would have a shower and a toilet in one, and maybe a, a sink and a toilet in another. Um, and then that suite would have a, a small refrigerator and microwave, that type of thing. Um, and then we have apartments, and typically our University Commons, which is our sophomore building, uh, has it's pretty new. It's only about three or four years old. And so those have a full kitchen. You would get a full-size refrigerator, stove, microwave, um, and then you also have in those a couple of different types of bathrooms and the one that houses eight you have actually two showers that are closed by themselves two toilets closed by themselves and then four sinks so there's there's a lot of um, difference in all the different types of uh, um, housing that we offer we also have some for upperclassmen that um, can live kind of what we consider sort of off campus uh, but you can also live in um, a fraternity or sorority, and we have campus Christian houses as well. So there's just a variety of different options for you to choose from. Okay, I can take the next question about dual credit and AP credit. Um, this is this is another good one. So students often will have the opportunity while you're in high school to take advanced placement, sometimes international international baccalaureate credit, sometimes CLEP credit, and also dual credit, which would be dual enrollment through a um, accredited institution. So at S and um, all of those things can um, transfer to S and to S and um, But let me go through them kind of individually. So, or maybe I can group them into two. So CLEP, advanced placement, and international baccalaureate credit. Um, all three of those um, have a test score. So you have a test and then you have a test score and then that can equate to credit. We have this outlined on our, um, on our website or if you would like to contact us tomorrow, we can connect you with that. Um, but it can tell you that, hey, if you get a, you know, a, an AP score of three or higher in, in history and government, then it'll equate to this history class here at s &T. And so that credit you will, you know, get, get credit for or be exempt from taking that course or that is me needed for your degree. Um, dual enrollment is a little bit different. So uh, dual enrollment, as long as you're taking college level courses from an accredited institution, that credit and that grade will transfer to s and 
Um, how that transfers to ST and how that's going to apply to your degree really varies by student, um, but we do have most of, of those course equivalencies already outlined for you, um, and so we can help with that too. That information is also on our website, but I admit that I think it's a little harder to understand or find. So if you have questions on that, again, feel free to contact our office and we can connect you. Um, and it's helpful if you know what school is providing that credit that you're taking, and even more helpful if you know what the course title and number is so that we can tell you exactly Exactly um, how that's going to be um, provided to you and also how that will impact whatever degree program you're looking into. Okay, so do you request the type of housing you would like and are there pricing differences? You want me to go ahead with that? Sure. Talked about that. Uh, there are differences in price and uh, each one of those are outlined for you when you're getting ready to choose that. Um, you will have the opportunity after you uh, sign up for registration and orientation, then um, you'll have the option to register for your housing. And so you can select the one that you would, uh, your preference. Uh, and the sooner you register for advising and registration, um, then the sooner you would be, uh, or the, the first in line, let's just say the, the, the sooner you would be able to choose those. Um, you don't actually make that choice until usually June uh, after your senior year, uh, but then you also have had time to look at all the opportunities and that type of thing. Yeah, I think you can actually get your, your choices in by May 15th, I think. And then typically your housing is given to you in June, like Cindy was saying. And so then the follow-up question is, do athletes live together? That, that's going to vary um, by sport and by your coach preferences, but you, you do definitely see some athletes live um, together. I think it's common for um, team bonding, but also for practice schedules. So that is common that you do see that. And most of the time, if you are participating in athletics, you get connected to the other incoming players also. And so that I think helps, helps you decide maybe who would be a good fit for you to live with. All right, looks like we have a little more time if there's any more questions. I don't think we've missed anything in terms of our actual presentation. So, so the question is, what the, what's the most popular majors at s and You want me to talk about that? I was going to say we can we can approach it as popular or, or you know there's some larger departments that you know but go ahead Cindy take a stab at it. Sure. Uh, well probably our largest department is mechanical engineering but we also have a very large computer science chemical engineering uh, we have a large area of electrical and computer engineering civil engineering those are all very large departments um, as far as in the other area which we call the College of Arts Sciences and Business um, we have a, a, a very nice group of the business and IST students and uh, technical communications. So there's a lot of really good programs here and I think that students can find something that they're really going to enjoy. And the good opportunity, if you do feel comfortable coming to campus is that you do get to see and connect with the faculty in the department. So we are, um, I guess I didn't and share a lot of information and this might help you decide if you did want to come um, to campus. We do have small visit days and so we have very small groups and small tours and um, in, in small, even smaller tours that go into the academic departments. So if you have any questions or concerns about um, the way that we are operating under some of the COVID um, concerns and what kind of precautions we're taking, feel free to call our office and we'll be happy to, you know, tell you um, some different options on how to visit and if that, um, you know, may, might seal the deal in terms of you wanting to connect virtually or in person. All right, a few more, a few more questions. Um, what, what are your wildlife biology courses like? I'm not sure if I can speak too much on that. I can speak to, um, you know, we have a lot of hands-on learning and we even have a, an area in which you can do that. Um, I'm, I'm having a hard time remember that what we call it, but we have a wildlife area in which you can go and, and do research and see things. They also take many trips also, if you're interested in, in some of that. Um, so I, I, I can't say that I know all the content on those courses. I do know that we can connect you with 
the department chair or faculty in that department if you want to ask them specifics though for sure field station field station yes thank you i was I was missing it all right um let's see how many people do your pre-professional programs so that would be like students going into pharmacy or medical school or dentistry um I don't have any numbers off the top of my head. I can probably get you those, um, but they're smaller, smaller groups. Um, so there are students who do go into all of those programs. I don't think I missed any. And we even have some pathways, like a, two different options to getting into pharmacy school. Um, and so there are definitely students who do that. And there's students who know from the day one that we had a couple of students in our, in our office just in the last five years that started as freshmen working with us, knew they wanted to go into medical school. And um, actually three different, three different students started that same year and all three went a different path. Now they all went into medical field of some sort, but one went into research, one went into being a doctor, and then another one took more of a, um, a different nursing type option. So there's definitely um, students who go into that, but it's gonna vary in terms of the size of groups who are going into law school or medical school or pharmacy school. We also have students who do that pre-med program and go into the dentistry or orthodontic section. We've had students who, uh, a lot, of, about 80% of our students who go through the pre-med program will get accepted to medical school or their dental, dental school. Um, a lot of them go down to the UMKC uh, dental program. Um, we also get students who go up to the um, St. Louis for Washington U, uh, Wash U uh, program. So there's a lot of good programs that they get admitted into after they leave s &T. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna hurry through a couple of these and, and Cindy, you're on deck with somebody that has some questions about internships, um, but I'll address the one about the, fan, the fun annual student activities and, and events. Um, we do, we, we of course have homecoming. We also have typically in September what we call Celebration of Nations, which is um, a really fun event that gets the community and the campus together to celebrate diversity. Uh, we also have St. Pat's, which many of you may know. Um, St. Patrick's Day is a big thing um, at s and and so again, we have a parade. We have um, many alumni who will come in. Um, so we definitely have these things. We also have every year um, Diwali nights, we have, we, had, we have all kinds of events that happen every single year. So there's definitely fun activities. There's going to be new stuff, um, but then of course you'll see those annual programs. So the question, Cindy, was about internship opportunities and co-ops. Okay, what's the question? Just do we have them? Do we have them? Yes. So we do. Uh, we have several, <laughs> we have a lot of students who do the internships and co-ops. Uh, internships, as I said earlier, are typically for the summer only, uh, and the co-ops are usually eight or nine months, and um, students will interview for those just like they do full-time jobs. The best way to do that is when you come to s &T, get your resume ready, you can go over to our Career Center. They will uh, review your resume. They'll help you with practice interviews. They teach professional development classes. One of them th that I really like is called Conquer the Career Fair. So it teaches you how to go into the career fair and how to talk to employers. And that's how a lot of our students get those internships and co-ops. I have a student that uh, was from my area who recently graduated last year. And I asked her, um, how much do you owe uh, after all of these internships and co-ops that you've done. She actually had done three internships and one co-op and she said she owes nothing. Uh, and it was all because of the money that she earned through the internships and co-ops and, and of course the scholarships and stuff. All right, I think we got through all of them with a couple minutes to spare. All right, well, thank you for joining us. When you close this window, you will be directed to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Just a reminder, this is just one of many sessions. So please feel free to check out our website, moacac.org to register for some additional sessions. And you can find a recording of this session later. Thank you so much.